Hi guys, this is the Working Money Podcast with host Michelle Wong, and uh, today we're going to be improvising a little bit. Uh, we, my co-host Marcus is not here, so I've been doing some of the shows uh, solo as of late, but it's all good. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's been going on lately that I've been very excited about. Uh, as of recent, I started to cover a little bit more events uh, in this past month. Uh, one of them has been the New York City uh, Real Estate Investors Association, and that is organized and uh, hosted by uh, Joseph Scaris. He's based out of Philadelphia. He also has co-organizers as well. Um, their name is uh, Yusuf Wilson and Charles Seaman great guys uh they work together in four states uh charles and uh yusuf they do new york and brooklyn and uh joe oversees new jersey pennsylvania and delaware he has over 25 meetups so guys if you ever want to tap into uh the real estate investors association you want to get more familiar get educated want to attend workshops or events just go to there you can find them at meetup just type up uh brooklyn new york city uh reia or if you are based out of new jersey or pennsylvania i mean excuse me yes new jersey pennsylvania and delaware I almost had a side note there and uh, you can also uh, look that up in the meetups and they constantly have events workshops so take advantage of that the other event that i covered recently was the realty 411 expo that was held right here in new york city and that is uh organized by uh, the publisher Linda Pliegas. She has the Realty 411 magazine. She also has a uh, wealth magazine, very informative. They do uh, expos nationwide. They do de uh, Texas, they do California, they do Oregon. They go to various states and they discuss what's going on in that particular market. So also uh, take advantage of that as well. Just uh, go to Realty 411 and you'll find uh, the dates of all the expos that are being held nationwide. Linda, you can always uh, reach out to her. She's a very pleasant woman, very easy to connect with. And lastly, uh, last Tuesday, I did a, an event called the Real Estate Subway Series. I covered that, and that was uh, covered by uh, Judy Sehagen. She also has a magazine as well, and that's also uh, covered for the five boroughs. So definitely uh, is something that you should go and benefit from. And the other thing too is that uh, as of late, I've been covering a lot of events locally. And the reason why is because I want you guys to see what's going on locally, uh, not just in New York, but also in nearby states, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, anywhere with that I can drive to and really tap in and showcase what's going on locally business wise, because some of you guys are not aware of what's going on. So this is something that I've been doing in the past. Oh, let's see. I would say in the past four months, I've been doing that. Uh, apart from that, I'm also starting to do my own events. And that's going to take place in 2018. Uh, I'm really super excited uh, about that. I have my advisory board that helps me out with it. And basically, we're advocating specific things, either in the creative uh, realm, either entertainment or uh, music, writing. We're bringing that together, showcasing uh, new creative uh individuals that are trying to make a name for themselves. So we're advocating that where we have uh, an event solely for them and helping them fund their projects. So that's coming up in 2018. One of the uh, first events that we're going to showcase for um, 2018 is going to be the Women's Empowerment Event. That's going to be taking place March 24th, 2018. It's going to be held at uh, Contra Studios and that's in 122 West 26th Street. It's going to be a great event where we are going to have 26 guest speakers from various industries come up. We're going to do a Q&A with them. Basically talk about their journey, 
into where they were to where they are now. And the reason being is that there are a lot of women out there that might not have, uh, let's say, the confidence to go and pursue their dreams. So we want to give an outlet where they can see people that are in the industries that they might be interested of, of getting into. And if they see what their story is, their background story and what they needed to do to get to where they are, it would inspire them to go out and do the same. So that's the main reason um, of why I'm doing it. The other is that uh, I, I also want to bring women together and be able to support each other, which is a, a very difficult thing. And I kind of joke about it because let's face it, w women, we are, we're lovable creatures. Uh, and uh, we have that uh, nurturing nature of, of, about ourselves, but we're also a little competitive and very cutthroat when it comes to um, being in the limelight. And that's one of the things that I want to emphasize that we all have a place to shine. And I also feel that it's not necessary for us to be competitive toward, towards each other. If anything, we should be supporting each other only because we're at we're at a, a day and age that women have more opportunities given to them. And by leveraging it out where we are together, supporting each other and, and basically empowering each other to move forward, we can get ahead and be farther out and be able to tap into other industries that might still be dominated by, by men. And there, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm this feminist or anything like that. No, absolutely not. I know the roles of a man and a role of a woman. I just feel that um, we're at the age that we can we can get farther ahead. If you are in an industry that is mostly male dominant, you can still d hold your own. And my whole thing is that we just have to, you know, basically support each other and what we and what we're doing. Uh, we can get farther out by doing that than getting competitive and not really accomplishing much. So that's the foundation of, of this women's event. And I'm super excited to uh, present it to everybody. So, you know, if you guys are uh, available March 24th, definitely re uh, register on Eventbrite. We already have it up. We have our website up. It's called We Rise to inspire.com the event is called we rise to inspire and basically from that we uh, are, are going to have different events so the women's event is going to be the first thing that's going to be held march 24th then right after that we're going to have a pro athlete event and that's advocating uh financial literacy that's basically uh pro athletes uh let's say that pro athletes are very they're very dedicated individuals where they're going out performing they're going out um, performing in a game and they have their contracts. However, uh, because of the fact that they're solely focused on performing because they have a contract, you know, with uh, with whatever industry that they're in, if, if they're in football or basketball, uh, baseball, hockey, they have that contract. So they're bided by that contract. That means that they have to perform and really uh, step up their game and just perform and and go out and win games and see and stuff like that and do not kill me guys because I, I don't follow sports that much but you see what I'm saying with with all of this and when you're so dived into just focus on a, on a contract you're not looking at anything else you're just saying I need to go out and I need to perform because this is what I have this is my contract this is my this is my ticket to to be able to pay the bills live a certain way you know have a, ni a nice home and everything else and you're entitled to it because you're working hard for it however you also have to look at the other stuff that it's not really mentioned or if it is mentioned is taken lightly is the fact that what happens if you're injured what happens if you retire you don't have that uh, you don't have that contract anymore so you don't have that money coming in the way it was before so that means that you might have to take a, a couple of steps back and if you're living a certain lifestyle and you're already accustomed to it it's very difficult for you to go kind of go back a few steps 
So this is where I want to bring in this event and bring in the, the literacy part, the financial literacy part of it, where I can also bring in companies, financial advisors, people of that spectrum that would be able to guide them and give them the other areas where they can also have that additional income coming in. That means that they can have investments and they can just do uh, passive investments and they have that money being generated or they can have side business or they can even have like a, a sole business where they're just solely the, the boss of that company and they have other people working under them. By having that, you now don't have to worry about what can happen in the future. So if you do have an injury and you have to, you know, you have to leave, you have to leave the, uh, what you're doing and, or you retire, you don't have to worry about what if, or what do I need to do? Oh my God, I have to, you know, I have to pay the bills or, you know, I have to, uh, pay the mortgage and I have this and I have that. You don't have to worry about all of that because now you have something else. You have another, another, um, form of income coming in and you don't have to, uh, be stressed about it. And the only reason why I brought that event up and that I'm showcasing that um, event uh, in the summer of 2018 is because I, I have friends that are in various um, sports industries and I've heard their account of what happens and how they get discarded very easily because they're no longer performing for whatever you know whatever team or whatever um, association that they're part of and it's very difficult or it, it's it's very it takes a toll on you when you you know you're um, on top of the world you're, you're you're going out you're doing your thing and everybody's around you and then all of a sudden when something goes down and you get injured and you can no longer perform those people are no longer there for you and they kind of dismiss you. So, and it's a very, it's a very difficult thing for you to go through and then start over and figure out what you're going to do from there on in. And it's a very difficult thing. So I want to be able to bring that awareness out and make them more conscious of, of what's going on so that they can pr better prepare themselves and they can now go out and have another plan, have another option so that they don't have to be caught up in that. Um, one of the other things, too, that I want to bring into place is uh, advocating in uh, the fashion industry. Uh, what I mean by that is that there are a lot of talented uh, fashion designers out there, and getting into the fashion industry can be a little bit challenging, a little bit difficult, because it's really about who you know um, in the industry, and you have to have a lot of talent behind you. So I wanted to bring that in and advocate. Um, so one of the things I want to do is have a fashion show for these young designers and connect them with veterans already in the industry so that they would be able to showcase their, their clothing line and be able to, you know, get in their way of having their own, their own clothing line uh, out in the public. To have them um, be able to to take um, their company and be showcased in in uh, retail stores. Why not? You know, somewhere someone has to start somewhere. We all do. We all had to start from somewhere, and we had to build it up. So why not have uh, an event that would be able to showcase that and give them an opportunity to connect with other people that are in that that they're already in the industry that can help them and guide them and mentor them and be able to also get the, the funding because when you're starting something in the fashion realm, you have to have funding. You have to have someone to be able to uh, back you up financially. Why? Because you have to start making a whole bunch of uh, line of clothing. You have to market it out. You have to connect with the distributors. All of that takes money. So you know, I want to bring that in and get people that would uh, would go and invest in what they're doing. And, uh, you know, I just want I just overall want to bring things to the public to give other people opportunities to be able to to get where where they're at. So, you know, that's one of the the reasons why I'm doing this for 
these events. And 2018 is definitely going to be the year that you're going to be hearing more about the events that are going on, not just with myself, but my advisory board, which I'm very blessed to have. Uh, they've been with me every step since the beginning that we got everything together. Uh, let me see. Two... Uh, two Next month, I am definitely going to showcase um, more real estate stuff, um, only because I, I have a real estate background. But I'm going to be going to Philadelphia with um, with uh, Joe Scaris, uh, the person I mentioned recently. And basically, we're going to have a mastermind workshop. Realtors from all over Philadelphia are going to sit down and we're going to have a discussion of how the market has been for 2017. And each person is going to have their perspective because they're, they're in uh, different areas of Philadelphia. So it would affect them a little bit differently. So we're going to have a, a, a discussion on that. That's going to be very interesting because everybody's going to have a different perspective on it. So I'm looking forward to that, see what their opinion is and what's uh, going on that uh, on that aspect. Um, one of the other things that I'm going to be covering soon too is um, there's going to be a, an event covering the up and coming developers projects that are going on in the Philadelphia market. So I'm really excited about that. Um, one of the things that are coming up in December is uh, uh, what they call a triple play. It's a, it's a real estate convention. People from all um, industries of, of real estate are coming down and they're going to be discussing things that are, are trending and it's going to cover three states. It's going to cover uh, New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. So that's why it's called the Triple Play, and I'm going to be covering that. I'm super excited, super excited because it's a three day event. So I'm going to be pulling in a few people from the industry, get their perspective on things, and see what's going on. So guys, you know, check it out, look it up, Triple Play. Um, it's going to be covered through uh, B Box Radio and also. Um, universe network tv so it's going to be radio and tv that's um that's going to be prog broadcast so i'm super excited for you guys to see that uh let's see what else what else what else can we do um there are some other things in the works that I'm, I've been working on behind the scenes. Um, one of the things that I am definitely going to put out in the next couple of months is um, I have three business books that I am working on that I want to present to you guys. And it's more on, the, on a business sense. Um, one of them I've always discussed on my show has been how, the impact of social media and networking and how that is a crucial part of establishing and expanding your business. So if you're someone that is starting a business or, or thinking of starting a business, or you have already have your business for a couple of years and you're looking to take it to that level, I am giving some advice of how to utilize social media like LinkedIn and Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, platforms like that and how you can utilize it and what demographics of people that you can get the attention from. Um, one of the other things too that I've always emphasized is that LinkedIn is one of the main platforms that you can definitely utilize on a professional standpoint. And the reason being is that LinkedIn being a professional social media platform, you can make various connections. Uh, this, what you can do on Facebook, you can do on LinkedIn, but on a different level. And one of the other perks about it is that if you want to put your presence out there, you can put articles up, put it out, anything that you're doing around um, your area, or if you're covering specific things and you put it up, you get a lot of attention from the people in the network and they start coming to you and connecting with you. Um, the other th the other advantage is that if you're writing articles and you're constantly put th putting them up on LinkedIn, that gets noticed. And then the more that you put it up, the more you get noticed, the more that you um, your level of expertise starts to go up and you start becoming the expert in your field just by doing that. Um, one of the other perks, too, is that if there are groups, connect with those groups. And you can also start your own group and have people follow you. The advantage of that is that if you put postings there, too, 
you start generating more, um, more of an audience. You get more followings. And people start to see what you're up to and what you're doing. You get more connections. From those connections also leads into getting into joint ventures, doing deals, and so forth and like that. So definitely you utilize that. And that's one of the things that I discuss in the book is how you can leverage uh, LinkedIn. Facebook, again, um, Facebook is more of a social setting than a professional setting. However... If you are connected with certain people on LinkedIn and you connect with them on Facebook, the setting is, is a little bit different. The dynamics is a little bit different because now it's a 50% personal, 50% business. And what I mean by that is if you connect with people on Facebook, it's more of a laid back setting because you're connecting them on a, on a friend level. But you can still do your business because I've seen people that utilize Facebook and they make their connections uh, business wise, uh, just be careful of who you connect with because sometimes those connections are not exactly um, foolproof. And what I mean by that, that um, there are some people on Facebook that are not completely legit. Um, there are some scammers out there as well that try to prey on people on Facebook. I'm not necess I'm not trying to discourage anybody. It's just that this is the absolute truth. I, I've I've been. Uh, I had my own share of experiences of that I that's why I, I can talk freely about it. But um, Facebook is another large platform that you can do things too, and you know, live streaming, uh, doing more uh, live shows gets your presence out there because now because people live in the moment. If you do pre-recorded videos, it gets seen, but it doesn't get really much of attention from from the from the followings of um, the people that you're connected with on Facebook. But if you do more live um, live stream, uh, that definitely takes, uh, it catches people's eyes uh, because they see your presence out. So the more that you do it, the more that you're going to get visibility in the public with um, the Facebook um, friends. Not only that, but also in the public, because if you put it in a public setting, it gets uh, seen all over. So people then start to notice, uh, notice you and also follow you on Facebook. And you can also um, follow up and see if there's potential synergy there for, for business. Um, and then you have Twitter and Instagram as well. There's perks to that too. Uh, Instagram and Twitter I got on recently. So uh, there are some perks, like if you tweet a few things here and there, that um, propels into something as well. You start getting following. So there's a there's a method, um, a strategy behind it um, in order to get followings from, from people on on. Um, Twitter and then you have Instagram as well. Um, one of the great things about uh, Instagram is that Instagram and Facebook are tied together. So if you post something on Facebook or Instagram or vice versa, that um, gets sent out almost in syndication. So if it gets posted in one place, you can click a button and it also goes out to another place. Uh, same thing if, the, if you're connecting with friends. If you see that your friend is on Facebook and they have an Instagram account, you get notification and you can also connect with them on Instagram. So, you know, those are certain perks as well. Um, Twitter and uh, Instagram, same thing. You can do live. You can do uh, a live stream and also uh, get the attention from, from people there. So that's other perks that you can also when you're uh, putting yourself out there. So um, that's basically like the concept of my first book. It's basically just giving a rundown of what you can do to really put your presence out there, make the connections and build um, your connection, your uh, directory of connections and have a big Rolodex because that can definitely uh, put you with people that you can work with in the future for joint ventures or deals or partnership or whatever. Um, and that also leads into the second book, which is uh, discussing how you can barter in business. And people say barter in business, like, you know, is, is that even possible? And yes, it is possible because I've, I've done that in the past two years where with certain circumstances, if you have a um, 
if you made a lot of connections with people, you have that in place and you follow through by uh, having one-to-one -one meetings with people over the phone or in person, those people become the foundation of uh, future business relationships. So if you are already, you know, speaking to them, conversing with them, trying to uh, establish something that builds in, into something in the future, now that you are at that place that, you know, the trust is there, you gain the trust from that person, vice versa, and you already uh, started to build a, a rela relationship business-wise, um, and then you take it one step further and they become friends of yours. Now, when you're doing things with other individuals and you are looking to do an exchange of, of services because you might not have the money, you might have a small budget or you might not have a budget at all, you can utilize that and be able to either A, provide your own services for that person and that becomes an exchange and it, and it doesn't have to have any money involved because that person knows what you're doing and, 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 and uh, what you're trying to accomplish. If you're telling them up front, hey, I'm starting a business where I've been in business a, a small amount of time, but I'm trying to build it out, they can relate. Um, you can exchange that those services. Or if you are not in that particular industry that they're looking for, you can also exchange it by also referring someone that you know within your directory to help and they can give their services. And that's how you can do exchange. And I was I was doing that for, for two years. You know, basically I'm upfront. I've started a business, you know, I don't have a lot of money. However, I know I have a lot of connections or I can help you connect with someone that can help you out with what you're trying to do. And uh, one of the things also that I've done is that I've connected with people that are also starting out or they have a startup business. And the reason being is that they can relate more than someone that has been in the industry longer. Um, I've been very fortunate, very blessed that the people that I do come across that are veterans go out of their way to help me out and try to, con you know, either connect me with someone or they help me out themselves to do whatever it is that I'm trying to do at the moment. So with that said, bartering does still exist and it still can be used if you do it correctly. And then lastly, my other book is, uh, you know, business etiquette. And this was something that I started bec because of my experiences dealing with other entrepreneurs, other business owners, and how they go about things. And I see certain things that they do, either someone that's either starting out and they're new to you know a, a particular industry or someone that has been doing it in a long period of time. There's certain things that people do that they think, well, if I'm in a particular um, industry and I've been doing this or their personality is a certain way, it conflicts with what they're doing in business. And what you do on your day to day, uh, uh, you know, as an individual doesn't also necessarily work business wise. So you can't just go up to someone and demand, you know, X, Y, Z from them. You have to build that trust. You have to build a relationship before you can even go to that level and, uh, you know, and, and, and say, I want this, I want that and feel entitled to do so. It, it, there's a there's a formality behind it. Um, I wouldn't do that to someone. I wouldn't say, hey, you know, I, I'm entitled to do this and I'm expecting for you to give me that. It doesn't work that way. You have to build to that in order to for them to reciprocate. Um, another thing, too, that I've seen is that people um, have a tendency to um, dish out a lot of things in in the public. They post things. They air their their dirty laundry with uh, people they're having issues with. You don't do that in um, in social media. You do that privately. You don't air out what the conflict is or the argument is because that reflects negatively on you. You might think that you're calling someone out or you're doing whatever. And that that is a negative impact 
what happens is that people see you as being a problematic person, even though you have that issue and that person did you wrong. You don't go out in the public and you do that. Uh, that's something that you have to take care of privately um, behind um, the privacy of the four walls between you and that person. Because the moment that you start putting, posting things out there, that's negative. And people shy away from negative. People shy away from drama. And if they see you doing that, that is definitely going to have a negative impact of what you're, who you are as a person, even though you're, you're not that type of person, but it's being reflected that way. And that also affects your business. So that's one of the things that you don't do. And I have always said that if you have to handle whatever it is, you do it privately. You don't do it in the public. It doesn't look, it doesn't look right. Uh, another thing that, um, I've seen is that, um, uh, let me see there, there's like a handful of things that I've seen. And I basically this decided to write this book and kind of implement the things that you don't do. Um, these are like a, a few things. Um, the other thing is that if you're going to keep your word, you have to keep your word. You can't go and say one thing and then change your mind and not do it because, your word is your bond. And whenever you're conducting business, you always have to hold yourself accountable for whatever you do. Um, that's something that I've seen people do, you know, day in, day out, where they'll say one thing and then turn around and not do it. And that looks negative too, because imagine if you do it to one person and you start multiplying it out, people, that goes around. And regardless if you think that it doesn't go out in the circle, it does because people know people and if you start doing that you have a reputation and then the aftermath is nobody wants to work with you. So those are things that you have to take into consideration that if you're going to do something you do it. If you can't do it then tell them you can't do it. Be fr be upfront, be straight. Don't don't go and and do one thing and then do something else. I've seen that um, also affect other people and then you you be you have a reputation. And then that reputation um, precedes you and nobody wants to work with you. Bottom line. Um, you know, this, these are just like, like I said, these are just books that I um, put together because uh, there are plenty of people out there that are starting out or looking to expand um, their company. And these are th these are things that you can utilize to get yourself ahead, um, you know, and have a presence with people overall and be able to, uh, you know, just expand it out and, and connect with people overall, have more business, more deals, more um, partnerships. So, you know, the there's going to be more books to come where I'm going to do collaborations with other people. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, people in, in various industries, uh, people in marketing, uh, people in publication, uh, people in uh, PR. Uh, you know, these are the experts that are good at what they do and they're very successful in what they do. And basically the collaboration is I'm working on the business aspect of it and how um, having a business and how to bring in the experts that can give golden nuggets in what they're doing. But this is more on a standpoint of having a small budget or no budget at all. Because I know for a fact that there are plenty of people that are starting out and they're sacrificing a lot of themselves, um, not just their, their, their time, but also financially. And, you know, they're, they're sacrificing a lot. And it's difficult to start a business when you don't have that much money. So, you know, these are things that I'm utilizing and uh, based on my experiences, I'm putting it out there to share with you guys so that you guys can also benefit from it and uh, walk away learning something and also utilizing f for yourselves and be able to go on your path of being successful in what you do. So on a side note, I'm, I know that you guys are either thinking that I'm talking too much or I'm talking... Um, in high velocity here, but it's just that, uh, this is a long time coming. Um, you know, it's been a year of full of, of my share of experiences up and down, um, good and bad. Um, I would say that is more good than bad, but I had to take some of my experiences that aren't on, on a bad note, take those experiences, learn from it, and also take it to 
what I'm doing now. Um, overall, you know, I have so many things in the works that I've been working that I've been working step by step um, so that I would be able to unveil it in 2018. The books are one factor. Um, events, the events that I just mentioned were is another factor. Um, I'm looking to put myself more out there um, by going out, traveling, speaking to people, um, basically sharing my accounts of my experiences in, you know, in the business, and um, basically discussing how things have been. Um, not as easy, um, maybe from other people, but it hasn't been an easy road to get to where I, I am now. So I want to share that with people by going out and speaking about it and also discussing, um, what I've done in order to get to that level that I'm in right now. And, uh, and then also showcasing the, what I said about the books, basically taking that and also going out and speaking about it, because I know that there are a few of you that are there and are going through, uh, certain questions in your mind where, how do I get started? What do I do? How do I connect? Uh, you know, I don't have the money. So where do I go for money? Uh, how do I market it? How do I get my presence? How do I make the connections with other people? Uh, you know, the, and the list goes on and on that y you, you go through your mind and you're asking all these questions and you're completely confused of how even to get started. So I want to be able to go out and discuss that and, and be able to help those people and really listen to what they have to say. And based upon what they're telling me and what their questions are, I can help them and give my account and my experiences of, of where I needed to go. And maybe that would help them out. And maybe they can take away some information of, of the things that I needed to do in order to, for me to, you know, to get to that level that I am now. Um, you know, and then obviously I've mentioned before that I have um, another show coming out um, that's going to be a, a real estate show discussing the real estate market. So I'm really super excited about that. That's coming out uh, next month tentatively, or it looks like maybe even in December, I might be plugging it in, but um, it allows me to travel. And one of the things that I've been wanting to do for, for quite some time is travel to other areas of the US. Um, going to uh, the West Coast, I, I've, I've been there. I've been to um, Las Vegas, I've been to California. Uh, love the energy of Vegas, of Las Vegas. The energy is very high. Um, a, lo a lot of interesting scenery there. Um, you definitely have things to do. Um, and then California, I, I love the weather of California. is is definitely nice all year round. Um, when I went, it was in March, and the weather was absolutely amazing. And uh, there's opportunities there in regards to developments that are going on. So I definitely want to bring that presence out and discuss more what's going on in the West Coast with this show and uh, make those comparisons with what's going on in like the East Coast, like Georgia and Florida, um, Virginia, Maryland, North Carolina. And these states all have markets that are booming and they have um, either development um, projects that are going on right now or uh, there are um, certain areas that are being gentrified. So I want to bring that out and bring it to the eyes of the investors because there is um, a high rate of real estate investors right now. And one of the things that they're doing is they're either host, they're, they're doing uh, wholesale, fix and, flip, uh, fix and flip, or buy and hold. And I just want to bring out the knowledge of what you can find also in other areas for them so that they can also expand their portfolio and go to other cities in, in other areas and be able to invest in that. So, um, you know, overall, I'm, I'm super excited about that and bringing it out to the to the public and being able to travel and, and talk to people and and uh, share what is going out in uh, these particular markets. So. 
let's see what uh, uh, other things that um, we can uh, bring out. And I do apologize. My brain is going 100 miles per hour. And uh, there's so many things that I, I've, I'm like have going on and it's being executed and now it's finally here and it's like I'm unveiling everything um, one by one. Um, one of the other things that I don't think many people are aware of and I think I might have mentioned it a while ago is that um, I'm working on a nonprofit and that nonprofit is almost here. It's almost finalized and that's discussing um, advocating more for women in domestic situations and veterans. Um, the similarities between the two is that they've um, psychologically have had traumatic experiences and uh, getting back into society is a very difficult thing because um, if you're a veteran and you come back from being deployed in you know, whatever the circumstances are, you come back and you're trying to get yourself back on track. It's very difficult. Um, uh, I've seen veterans that are homeless. I've seen veterans that, you know, they're, they have difficulties finding jobs. Um, you know, they, they've uh, been in traumatic situations and they're not getting the proper help by um, the government or by um, certain organizations. So I wanted to, you know, be able to help them out in that matter of uh, getting them um, therapy and uh, also getting them um, trained so that they can go out into the workforce and also finding them places for them that are safe for them to stay in. So that's like my project that I'm working on now that I want to see really take off in uh, 2018. I'm looking to do this uh, in the spring of 2018, same situation with women in domestic situations. They are put in an abusive relationship. They get they 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 have to do whatever they can to leave, and then um, you know, majority of them have been so physically and emotionally abused that um, they second guess their worthiness. They second guess um, you know they they lose their identity. Um, some of them haven't been working, so they've been dependent on the other person. And now that you're taken out of that violent environment, they have no place to go. They don't know what to do, and it's the same scenario. And I would say maybe 60% of them, you know, they have children. So they become a single parent. And it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a very scary situation that you're leaving a, vi a violent environment. Now you're, you're out. You have your, your children. Where do you go? You can't go to a shelter because a lot of the shelters are very dangerous. Things happen there. So they, they are looking for places. So I, I want to be able to have a safe haven for, for both veterans and women in domestic situations so that they can go have their own privacy of, of staying in, in an apartment and also be able to help them connect with companies, be able to be trained in something and be able to, you know, get employed and connect them with companies that are willing to train and employ them and have their own, you know, maintain their 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 place. Also uh, get um, therapy. What I mean by that is uh, get psychological help so that they can go through the situation that they're in and be able to talk about it and get and overcome it. And, you know, and those people that have children, they, you know, they've been pulled out of an environment and they go in and out of school. So I also want to be able to have uh, a place where those kids can get educated. So if they're getting homeschooled, then we can bring in um, uh, teachers that can come in and, and, and teach them so that they, they can be um, updated on, on the education. I want to be able to have that all in one in one area and they can get everything that they need and th be able to get back into society and be able to sustain themselves. And I think that, you know, the bigger picture is that y y how do we how do we do that? And that's where I am coming in and putting those pieces together and um, introducing that, being able to have a development uh, area where we can provide homes, apartments for them and be able to give bring them the other things that are essential to them. 
So that's why I'm doing this nonprofit. And, uh, you know, like I've only mentioned it once or twice, but this is something that I'm very passionate about because I've seen a lot of the things go on, and especially here in New York City. You have all of these homeless people that are out there, and it's very scary to see that there are homeless people all over the place. And I've, I've also seen it in California while I was visiting and I had my business trip and I was looking into a couple of things, but I see homeless people there. But it's, I think it's, it's greater here. Like it's the pre, it's very pronounced here, and it's very saddening to me to see that that we have such a, a a a big issue on that, and there's no place for them to go. The shelters are packed, or the shelters, some shelters, people are afraid to go to because of the circumstances of what can happen to them. Um, you know, so. This is a, a an issue that has been going on, and I want to see if I can help out and see how I can, you know, find a solution to at least some of the problems. Um, you know, so overall, the, these are just like things that I have in the works that I've been working behind the scenes, and um, you know, I'm very proud now to unveil some of the things that are going on and what I'm doing, um, and I'm looking for 2000. And 18 to be the year that I can bring more to the table and, and present more, help out more people, give more of a positive impact um, to people and just hold uh, account on what I'm, I'm doing overall um, with my own experiences and share that out with other people as well and see how I can touch their lives and see how I can inspire them to do better things with themselves as well. So, you know. Overall, these are just like the things that um, I wanted to share in uh, this in this episode. Um, one of the other things that I want to maybe just share a little bit is um, for those of you that are out there uh, that are in business and are looking to get more uh, sound advice. Um, one of the other things that I am putting together is videos. I'm going to be doing these two, three minute um, segment videos with people in industries. And we're just going to discuss important factors, important uh, golden nuggets that people can walk away from it, either if it's um, a writer or uh, someone that is in web design or someone that is in marketing. Um, I'm going to bring them in and I'm going to have these discussions and they're going to be about two, three minutes long so that uh, I can just give them out um, on a daily so that you guys can learn something from it. And um, I would also would love to get people's feedback on it as well to see if that really helps out for you guys or if, if there's maybe other means of how I can um, present other things that would help you guys out. Um, let me know. Um, you know, feel free to contact me um, whichever way that you can and let me know if, if there's any ways, uh, other innovative ways that you you want me to present it to you or um, maybe discuss other things that you're interested of, of knowing more about. And uh, behind the scenes is the president of the network of of the broadcast of uh, Universe Network TV. He's here. He's uh, filming me. And um, I wanted to get Ali's take on certain things that are going on with him. Ali, yes. would you like to come and uh, share a little bit of what you're, you're doing? So, Ali, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so, I'm a producer, a director, um, and a uh, writer. I started off with Warner Brothers a couple years ago, jumped to Weinstein, and now I've been in Penn for the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we got involved with, with me and my partner, uh, Dre Dynasty from Los Angeles, is Universe Network. Um, which is a proponent of live TV uh, moving forward in the future. 
and it's it's great for content creators because it's a little bit more open than say like a YouTube in the sense that especially the revenue and, and things like that uh, we're a little bit more open in the sense we tell you how things are calculated YouTube has a notorious reputation for being the be all end all of how things are calculated on their end and also we're just uh, there's less restrictions in the sense that you can post what you want and it's great we're working with a lot of content creators like yourself Michelle and um, it's awesome it's been great I mean we're moving forward uh, this past month and probably the first year we had 100 million views and over 250,000 subscribers so um, which is great we're getting a lot of sense the local sense of everything that's going on in different cities from New York to LA to Chicago international and we're grabbing some great events some war shows things like that so it's been great it's been keeping me busy at least so um some shoes i like to be hands-on and come on and uh, we have a great team behind us so and ali where can people find you if they want to tune in contact uh, you sure connections you can uh, check us out at uh universe network.tv um I'm partners with Dre on social, so you can check out uh, socialtv.network, which is channel two. Also, you guys can check us out, our magazine section at socialmagazine.us, um, print and digital, and uh, you can also check us out on YouTube, social magazine. That's pretty much straightforward throughout Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, social magazine in general. So um, you can definitely check us out from there. Okay, guys, so I'm super excited. Follow Ali, follow Dre. Uh, they have a great platform. They're the ones that are broadcasting my show, and I'm super excited to work with them and do more things with them. So, guys, I'm wrapping things up. Until the next time, this is the Working Money Podcast. Feel free to connect with me, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Working Money Podcast. Until the next time, guys, bye.